Hello and welcome to another Gingerman episode. Today um, and for the next few days I'm up in Tummel Valley staying in a log cabin with my mum Angus and Davy. So I thought to myself I'm going to get three episodes out of this. So starting off I'm in Tummel Bridge which is right next to where we're staying um, and it's absolutely spectacular around here. Um, we're right on the river, it's absolutely flowing, rapid, I'm excited to get exploring, so let's get into this. Tummel Bridge, show me what you got. Peace. Here we go, straight into it, no messing around, we've got signs, Queen's View, six miles, we'll have to check that out. The Queen's View, it should be the King's View now maybe. Tumbling waters and marching feet at Tummel Bridge, the old military road to Inverness meets the road to the Isles. After the 1715 Jacobite Rising, General Wade constructed a network of roads for soldiers stationed throughout the Highlands. In 1733, he paid a local landowner John Stewart of Kanakin to build the bridge over the tumult. It cost him 200 quid, cheap as chips. Today, this dark or fierce stream which flows under the bridge plays its part in the hydroelectric scheme, which includes nine dams and generating stations. Tumul Power Station, completed in 1935, was one of the first to be built. It stands on the bank of the river near the bridge. Fantastic signs inside. This is just basically written out our day for us. So we're 13 miles from Pitlochry, 6 to the Queen's View. We'll try and squeeze in the Queen's View today. I'm going to go for this way. There's this bridge that costs 200 quid. Aberfeldy. I'm thinking I might go to Aberfeldy tomorrow, or possibly Kinloch Rannoch. I've been to Aberfeldy loads. This is a part of the country that I have a lot of sentiment towards because I used to come up here a lot as a kid um, with my mum and my stepdad, and it was great, great times. This is what 200 quid would get you in 1716. A nice bridge like this. Good job, man. Because as you're about to see, look how fast flowing this water is. Perfect for hydroelectricity. Perfect for hydroelectricity and whitewater rafting. Let me tell you, I've whitewater rafted um, further down this and it's amazing here. And my cabin's just along there, right? We're right on it, so I can hear that flowing from my bed. And let me tell you, if you fall in there, you're doomed. That bridge isn't just a bridge, that bridge is an experience. It's like the, the fast flowing water underneath is incredible. It really gives you a sense of, I don't know, feeling part of the river almost. And it goes up like this. Woo! It's like a, a roller coaster. That's maybe not quite. Anyway, what we got here? This looks like something. A little walk, a sign. Have to aqueduct. Hey, I'm, I'm all about aqueducts. It's incredibly peaceful and calm along here, as you'd kind of expect. I'm just hoping I see some red squirrels like I did in Calendar. Look at 
there's the Bewley Denny Tummel substation. So I'm a guessing this is where they store all the electricity they make and then send it out to all the houses around here. It's quite a, a potent time to be talking about energy use because, you know, apparently we're going through an energy crisis. Um, so then when we see projects like this, and as it said, one of the first built hydro dams, I mean, obviously there's positives and negatives to every source of gaining energy. But I believe this is one of the most like incredible ways to produce energy from flowing water. Um, and we've got so much water in Scotland, as you've just seen there, in that river. Um, the, the pylons do kind of give this more of an industrial feel than you'd enjoy for walking through nature like this. But it's that sacrifice that we give, I guess. Some parts of our nature are sacrificed so we can have electricity, so we can watch Ginger Man videos on YouTube. You know, you can have a sort of grasp of where your energy comes from, but the more energy, eh, the more we understand about our energy and where it comes from, you know, the more appreciation we have. And as a, a conscious society, we can collectively fix our energy crisis problems. And just by walking around here, you can actually just see the mass scale work that goes in to giving everyone electricity. Can you see the rainbow? I can see a rainbow. Right, I'm back out here. We're gonna go along this very dodgy little road. This is Tummel Bridge Power Station. This is, must be where all the, the magic happens. It's of that era, that creepy architectural era where they've made buildings look creepy. Like, majestically cool, but entirely horrible in some sort of eerie sense. I can't explain it. Someone out there will know what I mean when they look at buildings like that and they go, oh. That's where I'm staying over there. That's the, the Tummel Valley Holiday Resort. I'll take you, I'll take you soon when we go to the... I'll take you soon once we've been to the Queen's View, but my cabin's over there. It's lovely. We'll take a wee walk along this road, see what we can see. For those eagle-eyed viewers who've watched every episode of Ginger Man, they'll know that I've done two episodes of Foss which is where I go camping every year with my friends. This is that same water that we camp on. If you follow this road along, that if you remember in the last episode, me and Sean went to the shop. That shop is over there where I'm staying right now. And this is said road that we drove back to campsite. So if you drive along there for another 15, 20 minutes, you'll come to our Foss camping site that we go to. Right, so this is the this is the official start to Tummel Bridge. So I'm going to head back to where I parked my car at the start and drive along to the Queen's View. Um, otherwise, I know this road and I'd just be walking along the road. The bridge looks even cooler from a distance. Right, oh, I'm back at the two hundred pound bridge. If you ever find yourself in this area, driving by, just stop and come and stand on this bridge. There's something really satisfying about it. You can see up the hills as well. I've climbed Shahalian, which is a Monroe somewhere near here. Um, 
because I do want to make a, a Monroe climbing video this year. I've done a few over my life. Uh, I think I did the first one when I was like 21. Um, I done one in uh, in Glencoe. I can't remember the name of them. It's got mad Gaelic names, uh, like Shahalian or whatever. You know, you could call it anything. Skimanapolin, Skihalian, Skihalian. Hey, oh, let's meet the Queen's View. Two pound parking for 24 hours. But no overnight parking. Uh, no dogging allowed here. So, for all the times I've been to Foss and Tummel Valley and this area, never been to the Queen's View. I didn't even know there was a visitor centre here, which is great because I'm thirsty. Uh, I didn't grab a drink before I left because I'm an idiot. Uh, aye. It's Tuesday, it's through the week, it's in the winter, it's dead. But I imagine through the summer this will be packed with coaches and tourists coming up from the cities in the central belt. We open in 2023. It is 2023. So I mean it's open. I don't know if the cafe's open. There's the Queen posting and she's got a man holding an umbrella. But there's the Queen's pew. Reserved for royalty. Right, it would appear it's shut. It's closed. The welcome info shop, the cafe, everything. It's closed. It's nice and quiet though, isn't it? Welcome, you're the latest in a long line of important visitors to the Queen's View. Queen Victoria came here in 1866 and thought the view was named for her. We think it was original... We think it was originally named after Isabella of Mar, the first wife of Robert the Bruce. There's our Fife link right there, the Lady of the Woods. Isabella is said to have fled to this area and hidden in nearby woods during the wars of Scottish independence. Isabella never became queen as she died in 1296, ten years before Bruce was crowned king. She was just 19. Isabella is said to have been beautiful, wealthy and well-educated. She's well deed now though. The viewpoint is 200 metres from here, along a wide tarmac path with a gentle slope. That is how fresh the air is here. That is insane. It's beautiful. In one way this is beautiful, and in the other, a little bit creepy. It's like eerily detailed. Oh, the baby's face is even creepier. <laughs> Royal tours and people's postcards. The road to the Owls was once only a track through the glens. Today visitors from all the Earths explore the route with braggart in their step. Only traders, adventurers, writers and armies visited the highlands before the 19th century. Then the romantic appreciation of landscape became fashionable and visitors ventured north on much improved roads. Poets and artists, Queen Victoria's visit and the coming of the railways all encouraged tourists to savour the view of Loch Tummel and Shahalian. Shahalian, mind I said earlier, that's when I climbed. What they saw then was a narrow loch deep in Strathtummel before the hydroelectric scheme before the hydroelectric scheme raised the water level in 1940. It's a toss up between Pitlochry and Aberfeldy for the next episode. I wish I had a voting system and you could have a wee vote and we'll decide. I'll decide tonight and tomorrow I'll film it and you'll see it in the next episode. Anyway, whilst I'm here and I'm at the Queen's View, I'd like to thank some other royal people, and that's my patrons, my patron legends. This week you are royal legends. <laughs> this week you are my patron royal leg royal. This week you are my royal patron legends. Names coming down. Thank you so much. If you want to join my patron list, get the extra footage. Um, and access to all the other videos. I think there's about 50 on there now. Um, follow the link, you can come and check that out. That's if you haven't watched all the other videos. Yeah, this is nice. It's amazing.
can't believe I've never been here before. This is the place to fly the drone. If ever there was a place. Look at that. That's false. That's false. And this place is amazing. I can see why it's called the Queen's View. It's insanely calm today and just wow. It's like looking at a picture. Right, I was I was just heading back to my lodge cabin. I noticed this. It's another creepy building that's a power station. This one is called Erake Erokte. Power station, we'll see Erecte. Here we go. In 1943, only one in a hundred crofts in the Highlands had electricity. In just a few decades, affordable electricity would transform the way people lived. Hydropower made this possible. Erecte Power Station is the largest one in the SSE's Tumble Valley hydroelectric scheme. A 10 kilometre tunnel from Loch. Erecte feeds its turbines and they discharge, discharge, and they discharge into Loch Tummel. Architect James Shearer used stone from the tunnel to cover the building, designing power stations to blend into the landscape, made them better accepted by local people. And that's true because you don't notice this one as much as you notice the other one. It's fascinating that it's taken water from all the way down from Loch Erecte to feed the turbines that come all the way here and uh, the electricity is produced in the power station. It's absolutely phenomenal. This is an example, this place. And I don't know the logistics of it, but I mean, 
when we are having electricity crises, mm-hmm. you know, and we were producing these in 1940s, it's now 2023, almost 100 years later, you know, we think we would have this sort of set up everywhere, completely. Almost running autonomously. Oh, how hydropower works. <laughs> hydropower, here we go. First you need clouds to make rain. Then you build a dam across a valley to make a reservoir. Next you dig a tunnel to make the water to a power station where it drives a generator by a shaft from a turbine. You need a second tunnel to take water from the turbine to a river or lock. You take the electricity along wires to pylons or poles over the hills and across the country. When the wires reach the town, they go underground to bring light and heat to our homes. And look, you can see where it's heating up. Right in the central part of Scotland, which is where we are. I live down here. As this shows you, we don't need to burn things. We just need to redirect water uh, and then use that flow to spin things. This is where the Erechte meets the Tummel. There's a lot of water there. This is insanely deep here. Oh, look. I just shat my pants. Woo! Oh, my heart is racing. Jesus! So I guess that highlights another part of the Scottish Highlands is this is where fighter jets will train. We're back at my cabin and it's lovely, let me tell you. I'm excited to be back to see Angus. Probably need to change my boxers after the fighter jet moment. Look at that, you can just see the water zooming on by. That's my bedroom over there so I can leave my window open at night. Just hear the water. I'm sure it sounded louder yesterday. Look at this. So you won't wash your hands when you come in. Or wash your clothes. Hello doggies. Hello. Spencer was scared of the fighter jet. Was Angus scared? No, I didn't appear to board the fighter jet. Will you bust the fighter jet? Then you'll be getting Angus to get a free dive and see how equity release. Angus, we're going for a walk. Come on then, let's go. I'm just going for a wee quick walk. Certain, certain types of stairs he doesn't like. Oh. Ducks. I think it was wanting to get the ducks. But he's got a short attention span, Angus. He soon forgot about the ducks. This is such a good location for a wee holiday home, holiday park place. And there's a swimming pool and a sauna. Um, I think I'll go and check that out tomorrow. Right, I'm back at my lodge. Spencer's chilling with me. Um, I'm going to go up to the main place. I'll give you a wee tour of it. And I'm writing um, next year's panel, Jack and the Beanstalks. We've just done Cinderella. And now it's time to write next year's one, Jack and the Beanstalk. One thing I'll say about staying here uh, in this lodge is the beds are extremely comfy. And these towels, oh man, they're so nice. Oh, man, these towels are good. It's the first week of the season, so everything's deed. So I've got this wee booth. Got the laptop set up. I've even got a telly. I mean, it's pretty sweet. There's a wee arcade as well, if I get bored. So, I have to upload the Blackburn episode, which is, you've already seen this, but... 
This is all the hard work that goes into it. Yeah, there's a whole board of things on. Right, they're really nice here. They've let me leave my computer in the restaurant whilst I go home and get my dinner. And I'll come back. Uh, and we're going to come in and take an inter the entertainment with my mum. Like, I've got boombox bingo at half seven. Hopefully we can make that. But, um, there's not many folk in there, so a good chance of winning. But we're coming for the live music. Anyway, it's the kids' entertainment now, so I've shut out because it's just loud noises. Wine. Big bowl of chicken. That's what I eat for dinner. Now we're having fajitas. Angus is having the dog food with some fibre. Angus. I've had dinner. Um, actually, I'm quite ashamed of my room here. It's quite messy. Now, I better go back up to the main bar bit to get my laptop and see if this Blackburn episode's getting on, uploading. I don't know why, but uh, my face has been a bit colder in this latter part of the day. Well, I haven't really given you the tour. This is my bedroom. It's my curtains and my window. Spare bedroom. Mum's bedroom with en suite. Can't see because it's dark. Mum's bedroom with en suite. It's lovely. It's got a really clean toilet brush. Because, you know, if you go somewhere and the toilet brush is dirty, it's not a good sign. Oh, aye, this is a good touch. It's got lights. Right. Right, let's head back up. I love listening to the, the water. Especially in the evening. It's the end of the night here at the Tumble Valley Holiday Park. What a great day I've had. I've explored, I've learnt things. I, I lost my beard. I had some dinner. Um, you know, got some entertainment. There was a girl singing there at the end of the night. It was great. And I, now I'm just walking back with my mum. They came up. We had a wee drink, enjoyed the entertainment, they're real friendly, they come and speak to you, chatted away to them. My mum loves it here, she loves these types of places, so she's having the best time, so I'm having the best time. So I, Tummel Valley, Tummel Bridge, thanks for having us, it's been a pleasure. I'm definitely be back. Um, so I, join me for my next episode where I'll either be at Aberfeldy or Pitlochry, I've not decided yet. Peace. <laughs>